Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green. And I'm your presenter, Paul Sheriff. Hey, Paul, we are continuing our series on building apps with XAML and .NET MAUI. And today we're going to start talking about data binding. But before we do that, we have a short follow up to the previous episode in between uh, Paul was wondering why he couldn't get the wrapping that he wanted to occur, and then he figured it out. So what happened? Well, so if we go back here, if you remember, what I had is I had the entry within the horizontal stack layout. The problem right. is that the flex layout is whatever that child is, that's the thing it's going to be um. laying out, right? So you needed to add another horizontal stack layout and when you do that, now it pushes. Ta -da. Hey, there we go. So, All right. you know, it's one of those things you're doing a demo, you're doing live and you're like, wait a minute, I know that works. What am I doing wrong? And then you figure it out as soon as we stop recording, right? Of course, of course. <laughs> but happily, since we're recording these back to back to back, we're able to address it right away. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. All right. So, so we're let's... going to learn how to bind controls to other controls. Yeah. Why? Why are we learning such a thing? Why? Why? Well, I got a great sample to show you, actually. So let's go ahead and we're going to bring up our product detail view now. And we've got this cost and then we've got an entry for the cost. I'm going to replace that entry with a horizontal stack layout. And the way that this works now is I've still got the entry, but I'm adding a stepper in. So let's run this so you can see what it looks like. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about this code that I've written inside of the XAML here. All right, let's get this over here so we can see it. Side by side, here we go. going into the products here. All right. So you can see the cost right here, and you yeah. notice it's been defaulted to a value of one. And then right next to it, I've got this little, what's called a stepper control. And I can click on the plus, I can click on the minus. Mm. And if I click on the minus here, and I keep going down, I'm clicking, I'm clicking, I'm clicking, nothing is happening because if we look back over here at the code, you'll see that I set a minimum on this stepper to be one, and I have a maximum of 9,999. And I've specified that I want it to increment by one each time I click on the plus or mm -hmm. the minus sign. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you'll notice, I have given this stepper a name. One of the things we've always talked about, if you wish to interact with a control that's on your page here, right, you need to give it a name. And that interaction either happens in the code behind in C sharp, but it can also happen here in this data binding, we take a look at the entry control. You can see I've set what's called the binding context. So what we're saying is, hey, entry, I want you to bind yourself to another control. And we're going to reference that control by the name called cost stepper. So you see those two values match. In fact, if we you know, use the IntelliSense, it tells us which ones it is allowed to bind to. So it looks for any hey. names. That's easy enough. And then the text portion of the entry, which is where you're typing in, right? This value here is the text property. Mm -hmm. So we're saying you want to bind to the value property of this stepper. So if I come in here and I set the value equal to 80, for instance, look what happened on the screen over. Automatically changed, didn't it? And now, right. Since they're bound together, when I hit the minus sign, it's going to go to 79, 78. Or if I hit the plus sign, it's going to go up. And if you enter 80 as the, or something different as the value into the entry, that updates the stepper. So it's a two way binding. You got it. So now when we go there, oh, okay. excellent. Yeah. So this is called data binding. And this, this data binding happens between one control and another. We're also going to be able to use our C-sharp classes to do this kind of binding as well. All right. So one thing you could do in the, I assume there's an event behind the stepper on click. So you could set the value of the entry in code. Correct. 
But this is, <clears throat> this is a little cleaner. Uh, I would no think code. Right. <laughs> code. Um, so I guess it kind of depends on, I mean, if it's a, obviously a simple binding like this, you'd put it in the XAML. If there's more complicated stuff going on, then you'd want to and have to write code. But It's possible you could have to write some code. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we're trying yeah. to, I, I try to avoid as much code behind and as much C sharp code as I can. If I can express right. something in XAML, mm -hmm. I'd rather do that because then I see it all right here. I don't have right. to. Okay, what was the name on here in the XAML? Then go try to find that in the code behind in the C sharp. To me, that's mm -hmm. it's a lot cleaner. Yeah, definitely. So let's go down and we've got the next one, which is the price. So let's do the same thing for the price here. Okay. So what I've done here now is I replace that entry. Okay, I've got this binding context here. All right. Mm -hmm. And so you'll notice though that nothing's happening. Right, we got that little squiggly again. All right, so that means that I've got to restart. <laughs> so it's just one of those things that does happen. Sometimes that XAML hot reload, especially when you're working with bindings, it does it does typically need to restart at a fan. So yeah, and there we go. Now you can see that it's starting with one because that's the minimum. So it's set mm -hmm. value to minimum, even though I didn't put it in there. So this one is called price stepper. So on the entry, I did the same thing. I set the binding to the value property of whatever is in this binding context, which in this case is the price stepper. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, one thing I want you to notice here, right, is, okay, I've got a cost. Let's say I've got a cost of 10. Well, right now I can still set a price lower than the cost. Yeah. That's probably not good, is it? <laughs> not for long, it isn't. Yeah, that probably wouldn't be good. Our, our bosses would not like that very much. So what we can do now is we can actually bind the two steppers together. So let's change this price stepper here. or Actually, let's start out with the cost stepper. Okay? So I'm going to go up to the cost stepper here, and I'm going to change all of these guys right here. I'm going to set the value to 10. The minimum is still going to be 1. But mm -hmm. now the maximum, I'm binding to the value. And look at the binding context for this. The binding context is okay. the price stepper. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then on the price stepper, I'll change these guys so that I have a value of 20. I'm going to start so that the price is always greater than the cost. And then I'm going to set the minimum, right, to the binding of the value now back to the cost stepper. So by doing this, right, um, I think it actually should probably work now. So if I bring that cost up, look at that. I am hitting, mm. I'm trying to click on that plus, it's not working. I'm trying to click on the minus on price, it is not working. Cool. So once again, instead of writing C sharp code, I'm, doing, I'm able to express all of this in XAML, which is really cool. Now, what if you wanted the price to always be 20% higher than the cost. Can you okay. do, Can you do something a little more complicated there? We could. There, you, you'd actually have two different options here. All right. So first off, as you mentioned earlier, you can write in the event, right, code that says, hey, always make sure it's, you know, 20% higher than the cost, for instance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you could write that in C Sharp. The other option would be what's called a value convert. And we're going to talk about those in, in actually just a minute. Okay. So you'd have two different ways that you could accomplish that. Got it. All right. So that's one thing. You can bind values from one to another. But that's not all you can bind. Okay. Let's actually go back to our users now. Our user details. So we'll bring this guy up. Let's bring up our solution explorer here. And we'll go back to the user detail view. So on this one, I've got a checkbox down here. Uh, where is it? Flex time. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to set the name to flex time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to where that time picker is. So we added the time picker last time. And I'm going to bind now the is enabled property of this time picker. I'm going to bind it to the context of the flex time. And if you look over here, you'll notice it already disable the start time because mm -hmm. 
the flex time is not checked. If I go up here and I check the flex time over this. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not just values. It can be all just about any property. Not all of them, but just about any property can actually be data bound. That includes visibility. Um, you know, the time could be bound. We're going to do that later. All right. And the date on the, uh, you know, the date could be bound. Mm -hmm. So all of these things, this is a great example of, you know, taking advantage of this control to control. Binary. So you could come in and have the, the page in view mode where everything is disabled and then have an edit button or checkbox. And then that enables all of the controls or absolutely like that. Cool. Absolutely. If that's something you wanted to do, make everything read only. Mm -hmm. and you have a button that click edit and then they all become enabled. Sure. Right. That's, in fact, a lot of people do that and they do that like bound to maybe some security. Right. Because right? if someone only has read only <clears throat> access to a screen, mm -hmm. the security would actually just hide that edit button. Right. And then right. they could never click on it. So nothing could ever become enabled. Yep. yep. So great. All right. Well, now guess what? We're going to write some code. <laughs> Ooh, finally, I know. Everybody's like, man, I've had a lot of XAML. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead. I'm going to add a new folder here called converters. And I re recommend you do this because you probably will create a few converters. And I'm going to create a new class. And this one's going to be called inverted bool converter. Ooh, that sounds a little strange, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, a converter is very simple. It actually implements this interface called iValueConverter, and it has two methods. This, this interface is really simple, two methods. It has a convert and a convert back. 99% of the time, you're only going to write code in the convert, not the convert back. Convert back, a lot of people actually just throw an exception or they return null or something like that. So. Sometimes, very rarely, I, I think I can remember one time I had to use the convert back. But the way this works is we're going to pass in a value, one of those bound values from one of our controls. And we're going to do something to that value. In this case, I'm going to bind this to like an is enabled or is visible property on one of the controls, but I'm going to change it. So if it comes in as true, I'm going to change it to false. If it comes in as false, I'm going to change it to true. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called inverted bool converter. Now, this is a very simple example of a value converter, but nine times out of 10, the code is going to be very simple in here on what you're going to do. Um, I have a complete WPF library I wrote years ago, and I probably only have 10 converters. It's not like something that you write a ton of. So, all right. So how do we use this thing? Right. Well, let's go back to our user detail view. And here's the thing I want to actually show you. If we look back here, this is in this namespace now, adventureworks.maui.converters. Mm -hmm. So that means I need to add a new XML namespace, right? I'll call it converters. And I'm going to reference, oops, sorry, equals <laughs> the adventureworks. Dot Mally dot converters. Yep. So then what I can do is inside of here, I can create a content page dot resources and I can reference converters and there's my class. I just simply need to give it a, uh, a key here. I'll call it inverted Boolean like so. So this is now a resource that I can use. And if you remember, we had resources before, right? Okay, so resources were things like that string or those doubles that I created earlier. Right. So now I've got another resource that happens to be a class. Okay. All right, let's scroll down now to find a radio button. And the radio button here is my full-time radio button. And I'm going to set a name on this. And I'm going to call it full-time. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the time picker. So now I want to, instead of referencing and binding to that is checked to the flex time, what if I wanted to do full time and bind to that? So I change the binding context here to full time. All right. And now 
I'm going to set the is binding to the is checked of full time, right? So that's remember the full time is the full time and the part time. Mm -hmm. So if I do this, so let's run this first so we can take a look at how this works just like this. We haven't even used the converter yet. And it's thinking about it. And here it comes. All right. So if we come in here and you notice that the full time is currently checked. And so I can actually choose a start time. But that's not mm -hmm. really what I want. If you're full time, you know you're in on salary. We don't really worry about start times. But if you're part time, you really want to be able to choose a start time, don't you? Okay. So this is one of those examples where, well, I want to bind to the is checked. Okay. But I want to change it so that it's the inverse of that. So we add what's called a converter here, and we use one of our static resources, and it's called inverted Boolean. Okay. Okay. This is a little bit of a contrived example, because obviously yeah. I would probably just go to the part-time and bind it to that. But right. it's a good way to show the difference and how sometimes you don't have, you know, like maybe ch changing something visible or invisible. You might need to use something where it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. so, very common thing you'll do. Trust me, you, you will use this all the time. So let's go here, take a look. And now we can see that now it's working correct. Got it. Cool. And then you can put anything you want into that converter. You could have complex calculations, check up information in a database, anything you want, right? Absolutely. I mean, there can be a lot of code in there. Typically, it's not a lot of code. It's generally changing something very slightly from one thing to another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, for example, remember how we change those handlers to change the on off to like, yes, no. Yeah. Right? That could be something you would even do in a converter where when somebody chooses a particular checkbox, maybe you want to have a label next to it that gives more of a full description. That could be something you could do in a converter. Okay. So typically, they're going to be more simple things. If you need to write a lot of code, yeah. you're going to wind up putting that in the view model, which we're going to talk about you got in just another three, three, more, three more episodes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Exactly. Cool. So, but at least we have now got a good introduction to binding controls together yep. and using these value converters. And again, the beauty is that you, you're not writing a lot of code for this. You're doing all this binding and interactivity in the XAML. So it's all in one place. It's nice, clean. Yep. Yep. And you, you know, might need to go there. look up you know, the little value converter and see what it's doing. But mm -hmm. if you give things a good name, then it usually yeah. is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, inverted Boolean, that's pretty clear what's happening. Now, can you do a peek on that? Can you go to definition? Can you see the code from so, inside the XAML? Is that yeah, if I do a peak definition on this, okay, all it's going to do is get me to this guy here. Okay. okay. So it gives me to the XAML because that's what this definition yeah, is, right? Okay. okay. So, but if I come here then, and then I go ahead and do the peak definition. There's the code. Okay, sure. cool. So it depends on which, you know, where you're located at, right? <laughs> So right. in this case, I, it was the key that I was down there. But right. if I come up here to the resources, it's very easy to do that. Piece. Cool. Yeah. There we go. Excellent. All right. Great. So that's binding controls to, uh, to other controls. In the next episode, we're going to look at what? We're actually going to take a look at now creating C-sharp objects and binding to those. Very cool. All right, so stick around and we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.